G'day, I'm Paul. We finally have a chance to drive the new BMW 5 Series and we're going to do this slightly differently. I thought let's drive both variants here in Australia at the same time, the internal combustion one, the electric one, and then we'll uh, kind of expand on it as we go. So pricing kicks off at just under 115 grand for this one here. This is the 520i. This is the only internal combustion variant we're getting in Australia at the moment. And then we get two electric variants on top of that. As you do step up to electric, the prices step up as well. The i5 in entry level trim is just under 156 grand. So they are a big step forward in terms of pricing over the previous generation. So these compete with things like the Mercedes-Benz E-Class, the Audi A6, and in electric vehicle trim, they kind of compete with things like the Tesla Model S, which is no longer on sale in Australia, but it is that sort of luxury sedan vibe, the Mercedes-Benz EQE, that type of thing. So today we're going to do a detailed review of the interior of one of these cars, but then drive them both back to back. If you do want to skip ahead to other parts of this review, you can use the time codes that are on the screen, or if you're on YouTube, you can scroll down and use the chapters below. And if you haven't done so already, subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon so you can find out every single time we drive a new 5 Series. So let's talk exterior design. In terms of the colors, you've got a number of them to choose from. Metallic colors and frozen colors are optional on the entry level 520i, but metallic colors are free of charge on the i5. So if you step up to that, you can pick whichever color you want outside of the special colors and it won't cost you any extra. Sorry about the flies here at the moment. It is very hot today. Um, now, in terms of the design, I actually think this looks really nice in person. The 5 Series has grown, so it's longer, it's wider, it's taller. The wheelbase is bigger. So it is more now a 7 Series or previous generation 7 Series in terms of size than it was previously. And as a result of that, it actually looks nice and big here in person. And so sedans are making that comeback in terms of being a much more spacious vehicle. And I quite like the fact that with these, you can pick your theme when it comes to the design elements. And here in the 520i trim, even though this is the base model, the way they've configured this looks fantastic. So you get these gold highlights around the vehicle, got these LED elements around the kidney grille as well, and these flaps then open for additional cooling. Really has quite a muscular stance to it. This has the M Sport package here in Australia, so it gives you that sporty vibe, even though you're working with the entry level engine. Jump over here to the wheels. So you got a number of different wheel options to choose from. The 520i begins with 19 inch alloy wheels. The i5 steps up to 20s, but then you can option bigger wheels. So this is currently sitting on a set of 20s here. Also like the fact that you've got that gold colored theme continuing here as well. Really gives it a nice look. And then M Sport package, you get those blue brakes in there an M badge up here. More of that gold theme around the side of the car there. Flush door handles here, so uh, that pulls out like that. There's no button under there, so uh, sort of similar to what we've seen with the 4 Series. No privacy glass here on the entry level. Uh, five here on that rear section. Come around to the back with me. So in addition to full LED headlights with matrix LED up the front there, you have full LED tail lights as well. So around the back here, you can see that uh, tail light profile comes around, a little kink on it, and then continues down the side there. They've integrated the exhaust under the vehicle, so you don't really see them there at all. Piano black down the bottom there, and 520i badge over here as well, which you can delete if you don't want anyone knowing which spec you're driving. Now, in terms of the design differences here between the internal combustion and the electric version of the 5 Series, you will notice a couple of different badges there. Front on, they kind of look identical because you've got the same openings there for cooling. So visually, you won't notice a great deal of difference outside of the badges and a couple of those minor highlights. So let me know what you reckon about the design of these in the comments section below. Do you think they look good? I really do think they have a lot of presence on the road. So I'm keen for your feedback. Let me know down there. We're in the new 5 Series. So this is what the key looks like. You've got a lock button there. You've got little M logo just there. Unlock, boots, and then your light button. Blank on the back. This is a proximity sensing key. So you can grab that door handle. Once you're inside, you have a push button start just here. Now, let's talk about this interior. Uh, I'm a really big fan of this. I just think that BMW's interior game is incredibly strong. They've just done such a good job of making this look and feel luxurious and giving you the option of customizing it as well. Look at this wood grain. It's like a little lightning bolt in it there. Open pore wood looks great. And then behind here, you can see that LED panel that runs all the way along there and continues along the sides of the doors as well. Really is just a futuristic vibe and a different take on luxury motoring. Curved display ahead of the driver there as well. And a nice steering wheel that sits beautifully in the hand. There is a lot of piano black down here, which I'm not a huge fan of, but 
ultimately I just think this is presented really nicely and it feels like it is worth the price tag and a big step forward over the previous generation. In terms of your touch points, so uh, soft to the touch there and on the door as well. How soft are they? We've got our durometer, we've tested the main surfaces in this cabin. If you want to see how this car compares to others that we've tested before, look at the link in the description below. Now, build quality, what is it like? They're all very nice and solid, and this is our door slam test. So infotainment, uh, I'm a big tech fan and I think that this implementation is fantastic. So head of the driver, you have a 12.3 inch display and then the infotainment display is just under 15 inches. Uh, this uses iDrive 8.5, so 8.5 is what they roll out on their bigger cars and iDrive 9 is on their smaller cars. And this brings a lot of useful enhancements over iDrive 8. So you're getting these shortcuts here and also over here as well for things like heated seats. You used to have to go into menus to adjust some of this stuff. So that is a welcome addition to the range. The infotainment has satellite navigation built in, so that's all sort of pretty straightforward. And then you can actually move between different, uh, different menu items over here. So depending on what you want shown on the side there, you can flick between those. Then you also have a catch all menu here that gives you access to everything else. So it is a pretty comprehensive infotainment system, fairly straightforward to use as well without sort of too, too many complications or dramas. You've got a voice recognition system as well to pick up anything that you don't want to be doing while you're driving. Smartphone mirroring comes in the form of Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Both of those are wireless. I'll show you what Apple CarPlay looks like. So yeah, pretty sort of straightforward integration there. No dramas at all. Very nice and clear as well, which is good to see. And this is what Android Auto looks like. Uh, so full screen integration, uh, sort of fairly easy to use. And then you can also go full screen with maps and stuff like that. So yeah, really nice setup. Now, uh, the interesting thing here is you have a number of option packages you can pick. And depending on which one of those you pick, you can actually then get enhanced sound system. So this particular car has the optional Bowers and Wilkins sound system. So again, depending on how much you want to spend, you can actually get higher quality sound. Now, in terms of the screen ahead of the driver, while you are driving, you have a number of different customization options there as well. And then a big uh, head up display too. So it is a properly comprehensive system and they've done really well integrating all of this within the cabin. Now, what about your safety tech? So you have a stack of it here. You've got autonomous and emergency braking with pedestrian and cyclist detection. You've got an auto dimming rear vision mirror. Uh, you've got blind spot monitoring. You have lane departure warning. You have a lane keeping assistant, radar cruise control, front and rear cross traffic alert. You've got front and rear parking sensors and then a 360 camera. I'll show you what that looks like. So there it is there. So you've got a number of different views you can uh, choose from. Camera quality is not amazing. So you can see there that it's kind of quite grainy and uh, yeah, not very sort of good to look at. Um, so yeah, I was kind of hoping that would be a little bit better, but you can see the, the sort of sonars there. Then you've got panoramic views there as well. Let's have a look what else we can do here. So car wash view, top down, so you can make sure you don't scratch your wheels in the car wash. And then you've got a camera cleaning function as well that'll give the uh, camera a bit of a squirt too. So um, yeah, look, it's, it's okay, but uh, not an amazing camera. And this is what the horn sounds like. So let's chat uh, practicality and we'll start off with your connectivity. So you've got wireless phone charger down the front here. You've got two USB-C charging ports. You have a 12 volt outlet here in the center console as well. In terms of uh, storing your phone, you can pop it there in the cup holders, uh, in the wireless charger, whatever, whatever works for you. Uh, and then coffee cup, what about that? How does that go? Yeah, no dramas there, no de-lidding risk. Uh, water bottle, same story fits in there without any dramas. Let's see if our big bottle fits in the door. Yes, look at that bag, really have thought of everything there. Uh, center console, not really that big, it's quite small actually. Uh, and then what does our glove box look like? fairly small as well. So quite modest in terms of additional storage. So comfort, let's talk about that. You've got dual zone automatic climate control. Again, depending on which spec you go for, you can option uh, four zone climate control and cooled seats as well, but this comes standard with heated seats. In terms of the actual seats themselves, electrically adjustable for the driver and front passenger. So you can go forwards or backwards. Your backrest can go forwards and backwards. You can adjust your lumbar as well. You've got seat memory for the driver's side. And what does that button do? Oh, you've just got a couple of little settings there as well for that. In terms of the seats, um, look, they're comfortable, but I don't know, on the drive here this morning, I wasn't overly comfortable after the drive. So 
yeah, I don't know. I'd be interested to see what this is like on a longer distance drive in terms of comfort. The steering offers both tilt and reach adjustment and it's electrically adjustable. On our reach test, all of this stuff is okay to reach. Once you get to that outer edge though, it is a bit of a lean in to access those uh, buttons on the side. So, second row, what's it like here? So, knee room is really good. That's interesting, it's like a plastic back on that. Uh, toe room is okay, headroom isn't too bad. Uh, you've got USB charging in the back of the seats here, also in the center as well, all USB-C. Little uh, hook there if you do want to hook up an iPad holder. Air vents down the bottom here, you've got perforations on the seat to keep you nice and cool. You've got two cup holders just there. It's actually not a bad place to be seated. Uh, ISO fix points on the outboard seats and top tether points as well. Now, our window test. So it's auto up and down. Oh, look at that, goes all the way down, very impressive. Now, cargo capacity, so you've got a powered tailgate. Uh, here in the internal combustion version, you have 520 litres of cargo space available. Uh, the floor doesn't come up, but you've got enough room to stick your laptop bag and suitcase in as well without any dramas. You don't have a spare tyre in either car, so you just have a tyre repair kit. And as you go to the electric version, you lose boot capacity. It drops down to 490 litres. But with both of these, you can drop the second rows out of place to expand that space. But it is quite narrow as you get down to the back end of that boot. Okay, so we have just hit the road in the 520i to start with. So what I'll do, I'll run you through uh, each of these cars as we drive them, but I'll keep some of the high level stuff to just the 520 and it'll be repeatable in the, uh, in the i5 anyway. So stuff like our uh, lane keeping assistant and all that sort of stuff that we're about to test, it will be the same story in the i5. So powering 520, so there are other variants available overseas, but in Australia, this will be the sole five series internal combustion variant for the moment at least. And it'll be interesting because a lot of police use the five series and um, they all have the 530D. Given that's no longer available, I wonder whether this will be enough to, to do what they need in terms of police duties. So under the bonnet, you've got a two litre turbocharged four cylinder petrol engine, makes 153 kilowatts of power and 330 newton meters of torque. So really isn't a huge amount of power and torque. And it's all mated to an eight speed automatic transmission that sends torque through the rear wheels. Let's see what it feels like here if I give it a, a prod. Yeah, look, it's fairly quick, but as in the gearbox is fairly quick to, to get adjusted, but doesn't really feel all that punchy. And given the weight of this vehicle, talking about just over 1,700 kilos, it's not a huge amount of power and torque to, to really sort of motivate it to move. It does have a boost button here. So if you've got paddle shifters to, to manually change gears, but if you push and hold the down one, it goes into a boost mode. It basically gives you a brief period where you're getting full throttle and boost out of the vehicle. So uh, that definitely helps, but um, just in general, it doesn't feel overly punchy. And when you've driven something like a 530D, it feels like a really big step back from that. Now let's talk fuel economy. So I'm gonna quickly whip through the menu here and have a look at where we're sitting. So we are currently sitting on an average of 7.9 litres per 100 k. So really it's not a bad figure and, and that's the thing, if you're willing to compromise on that punchiness behind the wheel, this is actually a really fuel efficient option that gives you, you know, the look and feel of a 5 Series without having to keep going to the uh, petrol station to fuel up. Okay, so time for our sine waves. This uses just a standard suspension setup. It doesn't have the adaptive damping setup that you find in the i5. Let's bump this up to 130 and see what it feels like. Yeah, look, it's, it is pretty soft. Um, the, the thing is, they've kind of tuned this uh, to accommodate for the big wheel options. So this is sitting on the 20 inch alloy wheels and a lower profile tire. And I think it is a good compromise between comfort and sportiness. You don't have that sort of neck jarring firmness of a sporty ride and you then get the benefits of having uh, softer suspension in and around the city. But the downside is that over, over a sine wave like that at 130, which is the maximum speed limit in Australia, does start to feel a little bit sort of weary and, uh, and doesn't really have that body control at the top end. So not the end of the world, but just something to take note of. Okay, now time for bumpy roads. So I'm gonna pop that into comfort mode. And this is a road that we attack at 90 k's an hour. 
and it is a shocker. It's corrugated and it's got a uh, condensed higher frequency sine wave here as well so we can see how quickly the suspension is willing to handle these constant bumps and corrugations. So there it is there, that's doing a really nice job and very nice and comfortable as well. So uh, yeah, not a bad effort there. Okay, so let's go for a sportier drive. We've got our drive modes here, we'll pop it into sport. So in sport, you can actually change some of the settings too. So you can pop the drivetrain into sport plus and driving dynamics, you've got like a different stability control settings, steering, different settings there as well. We'll go for a punt around the track and see what this feels like especially compared to the, uh, to the electric version. Um, on the back of this, you've got 275 wide tyres. So it's a pretty big tyre, and it means that it gives you all the traction you need from the rear-wheel drive setup. And I've got it in the limited stability mode at the moment. It's actually doing a really good job in terms of maintaining traction through here. And even though the ride is quite soft, there isn't a huge amount of body roll. And it's fascinating, so 1,700 kilos is sort of getting up there, but it actually does feel quite nice and nimble with some excellent feel through the steering wheel. Brake pedal feel is great as well. And even with the level of body roll that it has, it is still sort of fairly playful in terms of the way that it feels. So yeah, look, it's, it's definitely no sports car, but you can see with this chassis that it has been sort of put together to accommodate much faster variants such as the electric ones and also the upcoming M5 as well. Now let's talk road noise. Uh, you do have a fair bit of tyre on the road here, so on coarse chip roads you do notice a little bit coming into the cabin, but it's actually pretty quiet and subdued. It's nothing over the top, so it's a pretty pleasant place to be seated if you are going to do a long distance drive. Now let's talk visibility. So uh, despite this sort of sitting fairly low to the ground, it actually has a decent commanding driving position. So you can see clearly down the front there, wing mirrors are pretty reasonably sized. You've got a blind spot monitor built into those. Visibility out the back is great as well. Now you don't have the four wheel steering set up here on the entry level. So the turning circle is 12.3 metres. That's a fairly big turning circle for a sedan. Uh, it does tighten significantly with the four wheel steering setup, but that is something to keep in mind. Uh, and then in addition to that, you have a braked towing capacity of 2000 kilos. Okay, let's talk about autonomy. We use uh, the bowl here, the three outer lanes, to test the semi-autonomous driving systems. It's just a good indication of what it's going to be like on the road and how willing it is to stay within its lanes. So uh, we do this at 70 k's an hour. So we'll jack that speed up a little bit there. So all of that's ready to go. You can see the green steering wheel. And I'll just uh, lightly hold the wheel here so we can see how that performs. So. Excellent in this first lane, no dramas there. We'll jump over to the next lane. Let's see what it's like up here. Okay, that is locked in. Nice, that is doing a great job there in the second lane. Very confidence inspiring. All right, last lane. This is the tricky one. Let's see how it performs up here. So steering wheel has gone green. Look at that. That is doing a tremendously good job. Nice one, excellent BMW, tick, tick, tick. Okay, time to do some performance testing. Uh, before we do that, let me tell you about Help Me Car Expert. So if you go to Google and type in Help Me Car Expert, we can hook you up with one of our accredited dealers who can help you get the best deal possible on a new car that is uh, hopefully in stock. A lot of them actually have stuff in stock at the moment. So yeah, just go to Google, type in Help Me Car Expert and um, follow all the info on that page. Now, BMW claims a zero to 100 time of under eight seconds. We'll see how it goes. I've got the uh, sport mode on, drivetrain and sport plus. I've switched stability control off just so we can get some slip off the line there. As far as I can tell, this doesn't have launch control, but I'll just use the brake and the throttle like I normally would given it's a, it's a torque converter. Um, so here we go, we'll go all the way through to 120. All right, a little bit of wheel slip off the line. Try boost mode. There's 100 k's an hour. And there's 120, so I'll come to a stop and see how that went. So, zero to 100 took 7.97 seconds, so about on par. And then 80 to 120 took 5.57 seconds. So yeah, I mean, it's, it's not groundbreakingly quick. Um, I'm curious to see if it actually goes any quicker using boost mode. I think you can activate that from stationary. So we'll give that a shot now and just see what happens. Okay, so there's boost mode. 
kind of feels about the same off the line there. But anyway, uh, we'll see what happens. So I'll just take it through to up. 100. There's 100 there. So 0 to 100 with boost mode, 7.82. So marginally better with boost mode by 0.1 of a second uh, and under the eight second claim. Okay, now I stop from 100. Okay, here we go. There's 100 k's an hour there. All right, and hard on the brakes. Whew, that was violent. A lot of red flashing lights there as well. Uh, so 100 to zero, uh, 2.78 seconds and 38.16 metres, so about on par with where I would expect it to be. And what about our reverse acceleration test? So here we go. Oh, that's a modest 42 kilometres an hour. Now, before we go for a spin in the i5, I wanted to run you through a couple of the electric things. So, uh, usable battery capacity is just over 81 kilowatt hours. You can charge with three phase AC at up to 22 kilowatts, which is good. Or on the DC charging front, you have a peak charge rate of just over 200 kilowatts, and that is an average charge rate of around 130. Um, this is a lithium ion battery, and uh, the WLTP driving range is just over 580 kilometers. And the difference between the internal combustion and uh, the electric version is that you get adaptive damping over here plus four-wheel steering as well. Okay, so now out of the 520 into the i5 eDrive 40. Now this is uh, an interesting setup because it is a single motor and that means you have rear-wheel drive, single motor on the rear axle. They have done this before in, in other sort of electric BMW models, but it kind of harks back to that uh, ultimate driving machine where you're sending torque to the rear wheels. It is lively, it's dynamic. That is the sort of aim that they're going for, and I'll be keen to see whether that's actually achieved today. So it's a fairly healthy power output, 250 kilowatts of power, 430 newton meters of torque. It is worth pointing out though that this is significantly heavier than the 520. So where the 520 tipped the scales at about 1700 kilos curb mass, this is over 2100 kilos. So you have a sizable weight difference and that means that there should be different handling characteristics and sort of a different feel behind the wheel when you accelerate. So I'm just gonna roll onto the throttle here. Yeah, nice. So you can hear those, uh, the hand zimmer noises there that are part of the whole experience. But yeah, it is very sharp on the throttle and everything happens uh, nice and quickly. You've also got a paddle here for the boost mode. So you can give that a pull, goes into boost mode and you get maximum attack there in terms of your torque output. So uh, I, I quite like that as a, a sort of quick and dirty way to get up and move sort of fairly quickly. You'd also have uh, regen braking. So you slot this down into B mode and you have regen braking normally, but this will actually roll through to a full stop. System works pretty well. Uh, it will come to a complete stop and then hold the vehicle. So it sort of um, does that really nicely. For some reason, some manufacturers that have that sort of regen mode that, that is sort of single pedal driving, they roll off at like 20 k's an hour and you have to take care of the rest. Whereas this does the whole thing, which I'm, uh, I'm a big fan of. Now in terms of the differences here behind the wheel, the ride actually feels nice here. It is slightly firmer, even though this is on uh, adaptive dampers, it does feel like they've tuned in a little bit more firmness than they have in the uh, sort of passive setup. And that's okay, it's still not over the top and in and around the city, it still feels really nice, even on, again, the 20 inch alloy wheels that are fitted to this. You can go up to a 21, so that would compromise your ride a little bit further. On the visibility front, it all feels, uh, looks and feels the exact same as it does there in the internal combustion version. In terms of road noise, it feels about the same as the internal combustion one as well. We did put this up against our calibrated sound meter as well, just to give you a bit of a reference of exactly what the difference is between the two. This also carries 275 wide rear tires, so it does mean that you get that sort of added traction and where the 520 couldn't really break a sweat uh, in terms of rotating those wheels, this will do a much better job at that. So we'll see what it's like once the speed picks up. Now, in terms of economy, there's a claim of around 16 kilowatt hours per 100 Ks. We're currently sitting on 18.9 and that's since factory it was done what, two, 3,000 kilometers. So um, no, that is, isn't too bad. Uh, it's not amazing though, given it's a sedan, but it's, it's not the end of the world. So um, that's where you're gonna be sitting in terms of economy. Okay, so let's crack it up to 130. Maximum speed in Australia. I want to see what the uh, body compliance is like in this compared to 
the internal combustion car. So it feels fine. Actually feels significantly better than the internal combustion car with the adaptive damping setup. I'm actually noticing a bit of wing noise there as the speed picks up about that wing mirror, but um, you know, not the end of the world. Okay, bumpy road time. I'll pop this back into comfort mode. Dial up 90 k's an hour. We'll see what this feels like. Okay, yeah, it does feel firmer than the um, than the 520. We'll see what it's like on our high frequency sine wave here. It still feels really well planted. It is quite remarkable what they've been able to achieve with the suspension in this car, especially given the big wheels that are that are sitting on. So, um, yeah, I think that's uh, not a bad setup, and, and it is nice and comfortable there if you want to go for a drive in the country. So in terms of drive modes, uh, it's a similar setup to uh, the internal combustion car. You've got so much here to choose from. So personal, sport, efficient, expressive, relaxed, digital art. <laughs> it's opening the roof. Changing the sound as well. All right, uh, let's not do any of that. We'll just go straight to sport. Uh, and I will put it into the dynamic driving mode as well. Okay, the seats have hugged me in now as well. Let's see what it's like around the track here. So it feels not too bad. It's interesting, it does feel significantly heavier than the 520. Let's see how they've managed to do. Yeah, okay. So even with these bumps mid corner, it's actually not doing a bad job of holding itself together. It is significantly quicker than the 520. That added torque comes in nice and sharp. Okay, here's our back section. The brakes feel great as well, thank goodness, given you're carrying so much extra weight. Yeah, look, even though this does tip the scales at 2100, it doesn't actually feel all that heavy to drive, especially through the wheel. It's nice and comfortable. And then here on the back straight, it's, uh, it's still picking up speed really nicely. So yeah, 250 kilowatts is, is a great sort of middle ground for this. And it's right at the limit of where you want a rear wheel drive vehicle like this to be. So that is not a bad setup. It is worth pointing out as well that you do get a slight compromise here when it comes to towing capacity. So it's 1500 kilos with a brake trailer for the i5 compared to 2004 the 520i so you do lose a little bit there but turning circle is significantly better thanks to that rear wheel steering setup it sort of tucks out the wheels as you're as you're trying to do a tighter u-turn and then when you're trying to drive faster it'll actually turn in the same direction of the the steering to to really sort of pop the nose in as well so it's a really good setup okay so let's do a performance run here see how this goes so 0 to 100 time here is six seconds so I haven't played with this before. I couldn't get launch control working. I think this has launch control. I know the all-wheel drive version does, but for the life of me, I cannot get it to work here. So um, we'll just take off and see how it goes. We'll go all the way through to 120. Uh, so foot on the brake, foot on the throttle. Nice and quick off the line. I'll try boost mode as well after this. We'll go through to 120. Right, there is 120, and we will come up to a stop. Zero to 100, 5.75 seconds, so better than the claim, but we'll go back and give it one more shot just in boost mode, and then uh, 80 to 120 was in 3.37 seconds. I'm curious if this is all-wheel drive, will it actually do a little skid here? Let's see what happens. Only a baby one, that's okay. Okay, so take two. This time I'm going to try boost mode. I think that makes any difference to our acceleration time. So one pull of that, brake and throttle. Feels about the same, I think. And there's 120. All right, let's have a little look. 0 to 100, 5.76 compared to 5.75. So it's pretty much the exact same. So uh, yeah, all good. So let's see what the braking performance is like. I'm curious to see if it uh, pulls up quicker than the 520, given it is a heavier vehicle. So let's see what happens. Oh, oh right at the end there. It, 
Gave me a big old slap. Um, okay, so 100 to zero, 3.18 seconds, 40.77 meters. So it took two extra meters to stop, a little over two meters to stop from 100. There you go, it shows you the weight difference actually does make a difference. So there you go. All right, um, now turn that off. Let's pop it into reverse and see how quickly it will back up. Here we go. Okay, so 40. Three, four, five, 45 k's an hour. So the new BMW 5 Series, what do we reckon? Uh, look, entry level 520i, I reckon it's it's a fun and dynamic package, but it just lacks so much punch. That four cylinder engine is fine if you're just sort of driving in and around the city, but this is the type of car that's made to be driven. It wants to have its legs stretched, and I just think that four cylinder turbo is probably not the right fit for it. I'm hoping they do bring some of the other variants that are available overseas. They've got a great punchy six cylinder. Uh, they do have a lot of different options that they can finally bring to Australia. And I think they will because the police fleet will want to have some of those. So if you are in the market for an internal combustion version of this, just wait a little bit longer and see what they do. On the electric front, now it's interesting because I've driven all of the luxury electric sedans in this segment and this is head and shoulders the best. It is just so enjoyable to drive. Doesn't look like a spaceship. It's great inside the cabin. It has the punch in a straight line. Fairly dynamic through the corners. It still feels a little bit heavy thanks to all that extra equipment they've added to it above and beyond on the internal combustion cars, but it is still a remarkably fun car to drive. So should you fork out all the extra for the M version of this? I don't think so. I reckon the rear wheel drive has pretty much everything that you need and it is more than fast enough. So let me know in the comments section below, have you bought the new 5 Series? Did you go for the 520? What is it like to live with day to day? Or did you go for the i5 instead? I'm keen for your feedback. Let me know down there. If you did enjoy this video, please make sure you like it and you share it with your mates. And if you haven't done so already, subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon as well. But until next time, take it easy.